Good evening, folks. This is Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Sunday, April 8th, 9.59 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. Sakurajima exploded again for the second time in the last 48 hours, this time producing a unique type of ball lightning or plasma discharge, which we're going to show you. I'll leave you links to this. Now, keep an eye on the... Boom! <laughs> right there. So, interesting plasma discharge coming from Sakodejima. This happening just hours ago. I mean, we're on it, folks. Don't let them tell you anything else. So, heads up to the Electric Universe. As we descend to the grand solar minimum, the inclement pattern over the West Coast, critical fire weather danger down here over the high plains and desert southwest by midweek. We have winter storm warnings and watches throughout most of Iowa, especially northern Iowa, southern Minnesota. After a short respite, an inclement weather pattern is expected to take shape over much of the western U.S. by midweek with heavy rain, mountain snow, strong winds, high surf. Heads up. Last gasp of winter, more snow on the way. See how much will fall and when. We're talking moderate and light snow here. Just west of the Great Lakes, Sunday night now into tomorrow morning. Madison, less than an inch. Monroe, an inch. Darlington, two inches. Winter has at least one more blow to deliver southern Wisconsin. Guys, I don't think it's the last blow. And southern Wisconsin, you're going to be seeing snow into May my prediction, with another one to two inches just on Sunday into Monday morning, we're going to check the GFS model shortly because Billings is about to break the all-time seasonal record. All they need is 0.4 inches, and it's looking like a lot of snow-headed Billings way this week. Sorry, Billings, Montana. It's the grand solar minimum. Not my fault. Heads up. You are here. Modern Eddie minimum is in your future. Real quick, let's come over here to the yearly average sunspots. Cycle 25 is expected to be, at minimum, according to the mainstream, 30% weaker. Some sources say that we may not have a cycle 25. We're not going to get to that right now. What we are going to get to is the fact that Billings, Montana, is about to break the all-time record for snow. Let's check the GFS model real quick. This is out to the 18th. It's showing a major event here in Ontario in the Northern Great Lakes region towards the middle of the month. But let's back it out to this moment. See what's happening in the next 24 hours. What we have is moderate snowfall across all of Iowa, a lot of Missouri, Indiana. Whoops. Move it through. This is taking you out till Monday. And as we get into Tuesday, we're going to have light snow through Philadelphia and into New Jersey. Shaking heads here. This is out on April 10th as some light snow moves up into New England. Second event here at the end of the week is going to move across next weekend. So we're going to keep our eye on this northern tier snowfall event, which is showing 12 to 24 inches of snow happening Whew. into the spring. This is where the glaciers build. As we descend into the next ice age, um, so this snowfall pattern is what we would expect. Heads up. Oregon rainfall record set. High winds continue. I'll leave you links to all this. 48,000 Brits dead after the worst winter in 42 years. Not all from cold, just a few. This is a fear monger uh, website here. Obviously, it's the mainstream. After a brief mild spell, temperatures are set to dip again in April after the chilliest March in 21 years. It's estimated that 20,275 Brits more than average died between December 1st and March. That's a lot more. An additional 2,000 deaths more than average were expected due to cold. And that's just in one week. I'll leave you links to that article. You make your own call. Wintery blast and severe weather hits the country in New Zealand. 
as they descend into winter early. A frosty week ahead will plunge much of the South Island into single-digit temperatures with the first snowfall warning of 2018 predicted to affect many high-traffic alpine passes. Christchurch is set to have a high of 8 or 9 C Tuesday, which considering it recently had a high of 27, is a hell of a difference. <laughs> and that's the first grand solar minimum. Boom. Heads up. We're basing this all on predicted data from scientific evidence, from decades of research, from historical documents, from the mainstream scientific data that we have access to. And it is not going to get better. It is only going to get worse. Start preparing now, folks. If you want to survive and thrive in the future, you need to start changing your mindset. This is just the beginning. It's a teaser to wake up the masses, and hopefully they'll join us. M6.1 quake hits western Japan. Shin Mane, four injured. We have Shin Modake, Sakurajima, and other volcanoes erupting. We have earthquakes toppling columns and injuring four. We have the USGS downgrading it to 5.6 in less than six hours. Heads up. <laughs> and we have an uptick in seismic activity in North and South America here. Just popping off before I made the video here. We have a 4.8 kicking off in Ciudad Cortez, Costa Rica. And here we have another West Coast quake. Boom. 3.3, four kilometers north-northwest of Pinnacles. The mother frackers in Perry, Oklahoma are shaking with M3.2s after the 4.6 yesterday. Welcome to your future. This is just the beginning of the seismic uptick. Don't let them tell you any different. Here we are back at Shin Modake. I'm sorry, this is Sakurajima. And just check out this explosion. Second one in as many days. I love the way the lava settles here after the boom. It's pretty nice to see that, especially for all the campers in this region. I hope they got that special Tyvek coating, you know, that special cloth, the lava uh, shade screen. Heads up, lava shade screen. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Aoba, intermittent eruption happening now. Fuego, Ducono, Reventador, Sakurajima, we just talked about, Sabancaya. Here's the explosion that we just watched. Come check it out. I'll leave you links. Russian greenhouse construction, boom. Who knows what's going on? Hmm. I'm sure Russian scientists, like, uh, maybe... have looked at the sun. So Russia's well aware of what's going on. Yes, Russia is a huge country and a massive agricultural producer, and they are well aware of the future. But you, did you know 13% of its total land mass is suitable for farming? We're about to get to that. So they're well aware that they need to feed the future, and that is indoors, folks, especially with the hail on the increase, heavy winds, dust storms, unpredictable weather, temperature dips and rises from 70 to minus 10, especially my region. Let's talk about potential, potential agricultural impacts of the eddy minimum. This article is coming back in 2011. How come you never heard of it? Because they don't want you to know about the modern eddy minimum, folks. If you just knew about the centennial minimum, it would get your knickers in a bunch. 
We're not even talking. This is more severe than the Dalton, more severe than the Maunder minimum, no matter what they tell you. Mark my words. Here is a prediction of Canadian agricultural response dating from the last cooling event 40 years ago. What cooling event 40 years ago are they talking about? Cycle 20. One cycle. A single cycle cooling event in Canada moved the crop yields and the growing region south 100 miles. We're not talking a single cooling. We're talking a continuous event for decades causing global unrest, famine, food shortages, and a history the likes of which you haven't seen because they didn't teach it to you in your school. The disinformation campaign is on. They want you to stay completely calm. Nothing to see here, folks. I'll leave you links to all of these graphics and you can do your own homework because I'm tired of having to draw it out for people. Check out the sea ice thickness. This is coming out in less than 24 hours. We're going to look at it. The spike is turning upwards, which is going to bring my prediction uh, back into focus in the next five days we are going to surpass 2015 ice volume and we're going to head into a new level the temperatures up in the arctic are minus 20 they've been sustained for weeks and this ice is getting thicker folks not thinner we're headed up into the center of the decadal average and we're going to be reaching new levels of curve here. Yesterday we shared with you how many gigatons more snow is in the Northern Hemisphere than has been in the last 40 years. 600 gigatons more snow in the Northern Hemisphere than in most people's lifetime listening. Let's talk about cosmic rays producing sodium-24 and other nucleotides in the lower atmosphere. It's not chemtrails. It's cosmic rays, folks. This is a paper from back in 1970 describing how spontaneous ionization causes cosmic dust to rain in on your heads at the rate of 2,000 tons per day. So if you're wondering, like most sheeple are, where's the aluminum coming from? It's all the chemtrails from the commercial flights that I'm misidentifying. Well, back in 1981, February 1st, a paper by Haspi, Doke, Kikuchi et al., observation of fallout rates of atmospheric beryllium-7, sodium-22 produced by cosmic rays, concerning estimation of the fallout rate of atmospheric aluminum-26. You can clearly see that back then, they knew that 5.4 times 10 to the minus 8th aluminum 26 is falling out of the atmosphere at any given time. And as the cosmic rays increase, so do the rates of these cosmic debris. Thanks to the work of Robert Felix and other brave people to go out on a limb to be attacked by every sheep on the planet because they're telling you the truth about mass extinctions, magnetic reversals, and radioactive elements that are about to increase raining down on your heads and your children's heads, you better wake up. The future is not bright and you don't only have to wear shades, you have to build dolums. Whew. I'll leave you links to all these papers. They're ancient Let's talk about Lee Wheelbarger. He's going to bring a spark to the truth movement as we bring him onto our show Wednesday night. The Inconvenient Truth, where he's going to shed some light to further the evidence that the chemtrail conspiracy theory is nonsense. He has inside information. He's witnessed all the geoengineering. He's going to talk about it. It is pervasive. It is worldwide. But you have never witnessed it. That's how rare it is. Let's talk about solutions. Home biogas. 2.0 will be available for shipment in July. $545 and your food scraps can supply you and your family. 
with up to three hours of cooking time on a single burner biogas stove provided. Now this is typically used in warm climates, but there you can modify it to work for you. This is what we need. Get in on this. The price point not be right for many people, but for those that can afford it, this will supply you with heat and cooking gas moving forward. Look into it. I recommend it. Let's talk about those that can't afford an entire solar system for your house. When the SHTF occurs for 150 bucks, you can have this 30 watt foldable panel system. It's a hybrid system. It has four LED lights, could light your whole single floor in the house. It also has chargers for daytime use where you can charge, uh, there you see the four ports. You can charge your products there on the, on the unit. <coughs> Cell phones, uh, whatever devices you may have, lighting devices or survival tools here. So for under 200 bucks, you can have a solar driven charging system that may give you a little bit of respite, especially light. Everyone hates being in the dark. So check it out. It gets four and a half stars. There's other cheaper units that I do not recommend because they simply do not have the amount of solar. They're mostly six watt panels. This is a 30 watt system that's very affordable. And that's a boom. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. We're not here to scare you. We're here to prepare you. <laughs> Don't be scared. Be prepared. And that's a boom. Times are changing. I think you guys are catching on to what cosmic rays can do. They can help the narrative divide us and they can kill us. But our future is bright if we're prepared for the changes that are about to occur and they're going to be global. They're going to be catastrophic. You need to be planting seeds, learning how to uh, harvest wild edibles, be resourceful, learn new skills. Ben Davidson posted an awesome video today on how to light a fire with a lens. These are the skills you need in the future. Get back to nature. Plan a camping trip. Anything. Start now. Be safe.